everyone, this is what you are going to need in order to make this little zip pouch. You can also make it a box pouch like this one. So I'll have the instructions for that um, on the PDF download if you want to change it up and make it the box pouch, which is very similar to my uh, popular bigger box pouch. But this tutorial is going to have the strap and kind of a little bit different shape. So what you need to have is your outer piece, your lining pieces, two of them, 4.5 by 9 inches. The strap is two inches by nine inches and you need a fusible, pleat, uh, a fusible fleece piece for that as well. You also need fusible fleece for your outer fabric for the pouch. Okay, you also need a 14 inch zipper or roughly a marking tool and some pins. So the first thing that we need to do before we do anything else is to attach our fusible fleece to our outer pieces. So we're gonna do that at the ironing board. Make sure that you place the glue side to the wrong side of your outer piece, okay? I like the Pellon Fusible Fleece, but whatever brand you find at your local craft store is totally fine. So go ahead and go over to the ironing board and follow the manufacturer's instructions to attach your Fusible Fleece to your outer pieces. So it'll be one, two, and the strap as well. Okay, so I've got my fusible fleece attached to my pieces and you don't have to use fusible fleece. If you have another type of interfacing on hand in your sewing room and you wanna use that instead, by all means use that. I like the fusible fleece because it adds a little bit extra body and it allows it to sort of stand up on its own. So that's why I like it. Okay, so fusible fleece is done. So let's lay out. I'm using a 14 inch zipper. You can use a little bit um, shorter one but it, I like to use zippers that are longer than our piece. So a nine inch zipper would be okay, but I kind of like to have a little bit more of a tail um, off the edges. I just feel like it's easier to work with. So zipper tape side down onto our outer piece. Then take your lining, flip that over so it's right side to right side. Now we're going to go over to the sewing machine and sew this down. I'm going to show you how to do it on my sewing machine without a zipper foot. So if you do not have a zipper foot, you do not need to invest in one or wait for one to come in the mail before you're able to do this project. So I'm going to show you how I do it on my standard sewing machine foot. So let's head over to the sewing machine. Okay, so on my sewing machine, I'm going to make sure that I am using my straight stitch with it in the left side of the needle position. So for my machine, that is the 01 setting. So whatever that is on yours, make sure that your zipper tape and the edges of your outer piece and your lining piece are all lined up. And then you are going to put your zipper, your, your presser foot down so that it's butt up right against the zipper teeth right here. And then because it's in the left needle position, it'll come down pretty close to those zipper teeth. So that's how you could do it if you don't have a zipper foot. So we'll line everything up. You can use uh, clover clips or pins for this if you would like to. I just like to hold it. And then just make sure the zipper, the, the foot, the presser foot, whatever one you're using is up against those teeth all the way down. Then we'll open it up and take it over to the ironing board and press this down and then we will top stitch it. So I have it all pressed. Now it should be right side up on the outer piece and right side up, pretty side showing on the lining piece. So you can do the same needle placement and I'm going to have this right part of my presser foot go along the zipper teeth. I'm gonna keep it in the left position and stitch, top stitch that down using a coordinating thread because you're gonna see it and get that nice and secure.
it's helpful if you don't run out of your bobbin halfway through that. <laughs> I'm gonna fill up my bobbin and then we'll continue. Okay, so I <laughs> refilled my bobbin and I finished doing that stitching all the way across. So now we need to do the other side. So here's our outer piece, zipper teeth going down. Make sure your edges are lined up. Then take your lining and same thing, right sides together. So, like so. Make sure everything is lined up. Head back over to the sewing machine and sew down that zipper exactly like we did before. So that has been stitched. Now we press and top stitch this down like we did on the other side. Okay, so both sides are attached. They are top stitched. Now what we need to do is sew the bottom edge. So fold it in half with the zipper at the top. Make sure that everything is nice and straight. And then we're going to sew with a straight stitch with a half inch seam allowance. Okay? So enough that then we can kind of bring it in and get all these layers um, sewn together. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so a half inch from the edge, bring that in. I pinned a little bit so that all of those layers stay together. And I want you to change your needle position back to the center. So we want to make sure that we've got the right seam allowance. So mine is now back to the middle. So if you need to change your needle position, do that. Now that is a lot of layers, so if you have trouble with any shifting, a walking foot is helpful, but I want to show you how to do this without any special feet for any beginners out there. So um, you can see I did that with a normal sewing machine foot and it did just fine. So now what I want you to do is put your sewing machine on a zigzag stitch. So mine is a seven. And then while we're here, we're going to go ahead and zigzag this seam allowance with all these layers to get all of that put together. If you have something like this though on the back side, I do recommend kind of trimming it first so that all of those layers are equal. That way it's a nice finished edge. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and zigzag. See, it's a nice finished edge. And now let's go back to the work table. I'll show you the next steps. Okay, so this looks like this for now, which we will continue with this later, but first we need to finish our strap or make our strap. So we have the outer piece with the fusible. So basically we need to put it right sides together and sew all the way around it, leaving a hole so that then we could flip it right side out and then we'll have a strap that we can then place in our bag. Okay, so go ahead and do that. I'm not gonna show you on the sewing machine, just straight stitch at the corners, pivot all the way down uh, with about a quarter of an inch seam allowance, not huge. And then I'll show you how to flip it right side out. All right, so here's the, how that looks. And then what needs to happen is you gotta trim the corners. That way they're nice and crisp. Although don't worry about it too much because that's going to be sewn into the seam, but just so that we eliminate that bulk. So we need to flip it right side out and then pop those corners out. Once it's right side out, use a tool like a chopstick or this is called the purple fang, um, whatever you have that's going to gently Pop the corners out. Now 
And when that's done, press everything nice and flat and top stitch all the way around so that we can close up the hole. Okay, so here's our strap. That's done. Now time to finish up our bag. So what needs to happen now is we need to fold it a little bit differently. And I want you to line up the seam from the bottom of the bag with the zipper teeth. Now on the end with the zipper pull, we need to open the zipper because if we sew this closed, then we won't have a way to open that zipper. So we're gonna have to open up the zipper to about halfway. And that's why you need to have some pins because we'll need to keep these tails that wanna separate, we'll have to keep those together. I slightly overlap them and then pin them to make sure that everything stays intact. So if you are gonna make the version with the strap with the one side boxed out and the one side flat, the strap needs to go where the zipper is gonna be going up. So where it's gonna end, which is this side. So we also need to, I'm gonna have the opposite side showing so that it's the contrasting fabric. And we're basically gonna have it like so. So this is how it will be in the bag when it's finished, but we're actually gonna flip it right side out. So this little loop guy has gotta go in this way. So we'll line that up, line that up into the center of the seam. Then our zippers need to go in the center of the seam. And pin all of that into place. And you know what, clover clips are actually really helpful for when you have this amount of bulk and this amount of layers. So if you have clover clips, those are a little bit easier. But if you just have pins, that's great too. So on the other side, we'll do the same thing, although there's no extra fancy stuff that has to happen over here. We just need to line up the bottom seam with the zipper teeth. And you want to have the seam going the same direction on both sides. Now let's head over to the sewing machine. Okay, so let's do the side without all the bulk first. So um, we're going to do a half inch seam allowance again, straight stitch. Then we'll trim our zipper and then we'll zigzag stitch it. So that's kind of how it's going to work. So make sure your machine is set up for the straight stitch. And make sure you back stitch on this one. Don't run over those pins. And when you're going over the zipper, just go nice and slow. That way you don't break your needle. And I'm going to back stitch and go back and forth over that zipper, those zipper teeth a few times. That's how it looks. So now take some scissors and not your fabric scissors, <laughs> and we could trim off the leftover zipper, which is why you can go a little bit smaller than the 14 inch if you have maybe an 11 inch on hand. So trim up your seam so that we have all of our layers kind of the same size. Now switch your machine to your zigzag, and we are gonna zigzag that seam to finish it. Now we'll come back to this side in a minute, but we can go ahead and do the same thing for this side. The thing about this side is just to make sure you've got a lot of bulk. So go nice and slow with your sewing machine. You can use your hand wheel if you need to get go nice and slow. 
I want you to bump your stitch length up a little bit for this one as well because you're going through so many layers so we can bump that stitch length up. I'm gonna back stitch again over those zipper teeth like I did before. Just go nice and slow because that's a lot of layers for that needle to get through. So you can even use your hand wheel if you need to. Okay. So same thing, let's trim that up. Make sure those zipper teeth are together. There wasn't any separation that happened because this will be the time to fix it. And then same thing, we are going to zigzag the end. And we are going to fold it so that the seam lines up with the side here. And so it's basically gonna make a triangle like so. The seam needs to be facing down, so here's our zipper. So the seam facing down, and we're gonna measure, just with a measuring tape or a ruler, we're gonna measure three quarters of an inch from the very tip of the point and make a mark. So it goes all the way across. Now you can pin that, or I'm just gonna throw it right up onto my sewing machine, and we're gonna straight stitch directly down that line. So make sure you back stitch at the beginning and the end of both of those. And then we can cut it. So we cut it and then we can zigzag it. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing with this side. We are almost done. Okay, the moment of truth. We can turn it right side out and check out how it's looking. All right, so here we go. Here's how it's looked when it's all zipped. Got a cute little strap. You, now again, I like that it had an interesting shape, but you can box out this side as well and keep the strap, or you can box out both sides like the sample and just leave it like this. It's a nice small size. And this measures about six and a half inches by about three inches wide and about two inches tall. There you have it. Happy stitching.